We'll call this uh, legislative committee meeting to order. And we'll start out with some introductions here. I'll, I'm the chair, Pete Peterson. Eric Croft. Mona Brass. Jason Bockenstead. Rose Foley. Dave Donnelly, Anthony School Board. Well, fantastic. I'm uh, glad everyone was able to make it today. Would you mind having Dave up? Sure, Dave. He's on the school board and former legislator. We got room on the table here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And so we have just now received our 2018 priorities list. And maybe Ona would like to go through that with us. I would be happy to. Um, so what we did is we took last year's uh, program and, of course, deleted the things that had already been passed from <laughs> last session. But one of the focuses that uh, Mayor Berkowitz wants to put into this legislative program is um, emphasis on public safety and opioid treatment and housing opportunities within Anchorage. So. We deleted a couple of things that were on the program from last year um, that we see as not as high a priority as some of these other issues like um, increased uh, funding for the state prosecutors, state troopers, uh, opioid treatment programs, and housing vouchers. And uh, we're making some sort of room for that, if you will. Um, you have the draft, which is old language, and then the single page, which is the list of items that we are currently working on language for from the various departments of specialty. So um, if you want to review the six item list. Um, Most like of our housing voucher money comes through the state? Yes. Uh, through us from the state? Yeah. Yes, correct. And um, that program is very successful, but um, relatively uh, limited. And our um, housing and homeless coordinator believes Thank that you. if there was a greater access to that, we would see a lot more success. Just for the record, I uh, wanted to note that Mr. Dunbar joined us. Thank you. Um, so the first one is, as everybody who has been involved in the SB 91, SB 54 conversation, um, is aware of the cuts to state prosecutors and the state troopers um, people feel has done a disservice to Anchorage and the state at large. So um, we're requesting that they reinstate uh, particularly funding within the prosecutor's office. Um, additional opioid treatment program support um, in order to address the issues that we're seeing here in Anchorage. I believe Mr. Croft has a keen interest in um, the needle exchange program through forays and some other opportunities that we have recognized through DHHS and our um, housing and homeless coordinator, the housing vouchers that we just discussed, and um, capital funding for the Clithrow project. Um, I don't know how in depth or up to speed everybody is with that project. I think our plan is to have a bit of a walkabout with some of the assembly members and legislators to re-familiarize where we are on that project. We're currently in the design and feasibility stages of figuring out how it's going <coughs> to um, I'm woefully ignorant or lost track of it before. So generally, we're com what are we doing, just in a nutshell? <coughs> we're trying to open Cliff Road again with up to 100 beds of varying types of treatment and long-term care, so. Us doing it, state doing it, or us cooperating doing it? Us doing it. Yeah. And, and one of the best things we have going there is we actually have a significant plot of land that we're yes. able to We have a significant develop. plot of land. It has been um, cleaned up so that it can be used. Uh, they, there was some funding acquired for um, going through the design process, which is what they're doing right now. Um, I can't think of who we're working with on that. I'd have to ask Nancy. Um, but the faster we can get funding to stand the building and the program up to the level that we do, we'd be adding up to 100 beds in a community where we have 14. And those would be alcohol or drug or mixed? All or of and was it always ours or was it theirs? Or was it? I don't know. 
I think it has been some combination of not theirs. Salvation, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I actually thought it wasn't a state owned facility. Yeah. I thought it was private. They funded, but, yeah, they've, they've funded through capital appropriations um, the so operations. They thought it was an army, I thought. Yeah, yeah. 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 And um, the next item is the Alaska Railroad land sale to the port. Gift to the port. It's a sale. It'll, there will actually be funds that exchange hands. This was part of the negotiation between the railroad and the city on the um, federal um, FTA 5307 funds. Um, as, a, uh, as part of the deal, the railroad agreed to sell the 22 acres of land, I think it's 22 acres, of land that um, the port currently has infrastructure on, but the railroad owns um, to the port for $1.5 million, which is great. Uh, the railroad has signed off on that, the railroad board has signed off on that, but because the railroad is a state entity, they have to go to the legislature for approval of any land sales. So the plan, to my knowledge, is that the railroad will present a package of about seven or eight um, land swaps for sales with various <coughs> entities, DOT, um, us, um, I think one or two private entities uh, for the legislature to vote on. Don't see it being controversial, um, but you never know. And so where, uh, where are the funds for that purchase? Are they coming from the... Ports? Yes. And do they have that yes. much? Okay, yeah. well that's 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 good I guess then. Yes. And um, HB 176 is a bill that uh, started moving last session and um, it is legislation that would allow uh, increased reimbursement for ambulance fees based on um, Medicaid allowances because currently there is additional room in what you can reimburse for, but we are not allowed to reimburse up to that level. It's a bill that's being run, I think, through Representative Westlake. And, and so it would um, allow in, or let insurance companies pay more for of the percent of their ambulance fee? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. Yes. Are we paying rent to the railroad for the land we use? I believe so. I don't know what the dollar amount is, but yeah, there's long-term leases on that property. And I'm, I'm slow, just getting back through it. And then on the Clitheroe, yeah, we all have this general recollection that it was su support given to the Salvation Army, maybe building buildings for them or providing land that they could go on. Um, would the Salvation Army be involved again, or we'd step into it? Uh, it? It would not be us. Yeah. No, the we municipality would, would not run it. We'd build we a building and have somebody do the... Third-party providers. Yeah. yeah. So far, we are not in that business. Oh, well, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Dunbar. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I apologize for being late. So uh, perhaps you already answered this question well before I got here, but um, <clears throat> do you have... so? what portions of our 2017 legislative program sort of carried over? That. This is, okay. So, what was well, it? right, so the, yeah. the capital request, um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head which of these were there. All of those, all of those in that document that you have in your hand were in the 2017 request. Yeah. Okay. There were some that were deleted out of the 2017 request, <coughs> either because they passed or mm -hmm. because the priority for the 2018 program is focused on public safety and sure so I guess that would be something I would like if the administration can um, provide it or have we've had this before ta have their lobbyists provide it which is a description of what was done on the on the items that we requested last time and um, you know, let us know, okay, this passed in such and such form, or this didn't pass in such and such form for this reason. I, well, we covered that at the last legislative committee meeting, I believe, but I'm happy oh, to okay. go through it. And if you, do you want it written down, or do you want me to just 
set aside. That would be time. great. Yeah, I apologize for it. Why don't you all have another? Well, well if, if I think you're out of town. Out of town. Oh, okay. Yeah. If our lobbyists um, knew who the uh, people were that were standing in the way of some of these things passing, we might be able to contact those individuals. Um, yeah, I would imagine that you could, and we can figure out that list. But it's even more than just standing in the way of, it's getting people to introduce the legislation and sure. carry it. So um, I last guess year we had three pieces, three or four pieces of our program passed through, mm -hmm. which we think is pretty good, oh, considering yeah. their level of distraction last year. Really? Definitely. Some, <laughs> some of the property tax exemption stuff uh, was very good. I, I would, so I, I guess another thing, this came up, I remember, last year during the budget, um, or actually, no, I think it was, it was after we passed the budget, it was during some kind of supplemental when we were funding one of the lobbying contracts, and I believe it was John, but I, I don't want to misquote, but basically said, we need to have a better sense of what our actual results are from this money that we're paying. And so I think that is something that I certainly echo, that from our lobbyists or whomever is out down there doing the work, I, I want more thorough readouts on what is what happened last year with the money that we spent. Okay, I can request that. Yeah. Well, I, I think the Muni got beat up a little bit over uh, the airwaves about how much we were actually spending on our <coughs> lobbyists. Sure. Which is interesting because so. it's less than has been spent in the previous years. <coughs> sure. Well, you know, short-term memory yeah, situation. Of course. And I actually do think that when you look at the amount of, when you look at what passed, um, I think it actually is a pretty good return on investment. But there is, it hasn't been really been communicated, I don't think, to the body very well. Okay. Um, and, you know, communicated to the public is a separate issue, but even to even to the assembly, I don't think it's been communicated. Um, well, in the legislation that, um, uh, I don't know if you were in the session, right, the legislation that um, Mr. Halcrow referred to in the budget work session, SB 100, that was the vehicle that rolled in almost everything that mm -hmm. was of value to us last year that became a pretty active football between the two bodies. Okay. Great. Anything else, Mr. Dunmore? No, I think that's, uh, that's it for this. Well, I, I actually turned over to the last page and um, it's talking about uh, decreased limitations on enhanced 911 surcharge. Yes. And and this was something that I believe Mr. Dunbar was in pretty engaged on last year. Um, it was a conversation about the ability to charge enough money to recoup expenses for the 911 service provided, and that we are at the limit that we are allowed to charge, and the state is the block there. Well, I, th I think what, what I had said during the uh, during the discussions on this, remember we raised it from one fifty to two dollars. Mm -hmm. For me, um, unless I'm misremembering, these don't apply to cell phones. Correct. And um, I'm not sure if that if that's unenforceable. Um, I don't think it should be. I mean, nine oh seven numbers, um, but that is something I'd like to see changed. If we, I believe, when we talked about it at the time, that we were limited by state law to only landlines. Correct. Yeah. So that's something that I think obvious should fairly obviously change. Yeah. And every we, year we're gonna have less and less landlines. And we talked to GCI and ACS about, um, I, and I wish I could remember exactly how that broke down. Let me go back through and look through my emails to see, because we did reach out to the two main providers to see what that limitation was and how they would be able to work around it. Since we stole Becky Wynn Pearson from GCI, we might be able sure. to. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure that there. the cell phone. <clears throat> I'm sure that the cell phone providers don't want to pay this because it makes them a little less competitive vis-a-vis -vis, um, landlines. But uh, I mean, certainly, if I, I would want my, so I would want my product to be subsidized by some sure. other product. Right. Um, but uh, well, I would think that for what most people are paying for their cell phone bills every month, they wouldn't even notice another fifty cents. Oh, I'm not. Even, well, it'd be another. No, they're not paying anything. They're so not paying another two dollars. Another two dollars. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm yeah, maybe, um, or maybe it was maybe it was also the temporary phones. I think that was also the temporary burner phones, were part phones of the, yeah. which is more difficult. Yeah, that was so cool. perhaps perhaps they actually could do cell phones, but temporary phones. Are the temporary phones were part of the difficulty because they go through third party sales like Fred Meyer and all of those other places, yeah. and so charging that 
to the person when they're just buying something off the shelf to activate as opposed to going through yeah. GCI or ACS presents a bit of a billing issue. And, sure. and so those are the phones that people buy that they can buy additional minutes and program right. into the phone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they're not cycling on a yeah, monthly those, rate. Those would be harder to way keep way track of. of. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. For sure. All right. <clears throat> any, any other discussion about some of these uh, requests for legislation here? And then do you want to make room in this? Do you want to delete some of these? Uh, no, the ones that are left there are the ones that, that we are supportive of continuing on in the program. Um, but last year, you know, we heard the amendments from the body and incorporated, I think, everything except maybe one of Assemblymember Evans' thoughts. Um, uh, so if there are ads that people want to see, we would welcome the recommendations or the language desired and um, we'll take into consideration. Well, I know this uh, community dividend idea is something that the municipal league is behind 100%. Yes. Yes. I like that you have already support of Alaska modernization project. I, yeah. I went through and changed that before I printed these, just to make sure. And I remember I've had a conversation with Steve Rebuffo a few times about mm -hmm. trying to find a different word other than modernization, because modernization sounds like something you want, not something you need. Yeah. Well, and it was changed from the expansion to the modernization, right. so and because I, I, the expansion is definitely <coughs> not something we need. But if we could find some other word, and I don't have it off of my head, something like reclamation, or you know, something that implies this is going to fall salvage. over. Yes, yeah, so this is going to literally fall the over. Port, the Port Salvation Project. Salvage. Yeah, the Port, <laughs> Salva the Port Salvation Project. Right. Yeah. Right. But 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 seriously, finding another word to describe it. I know they have tons of literature that says modernization, and I know that's what they are actually doing, what they like to say they're doing. But when people see modernization, it's that told this last year. They think, ah, oh, you know, it's like buying a 2017 car when you're in 2010, but it still works. But that's just like fundamentally different than what's actually happening here. We're trying to prevent like a, you know, like a disaster, basically. Yeah. So, anyway, <coughs> I know Ethan's a bit of a wordsmith. Let me turn him onto it for he'll come up with some good. I'll, I'll see three synonyms. <laughs> they'll run through in succession. Well, we have this new city manager that's probably kind of a that wordsmith as well. Yes, I will. Um, I will put it on Mr. Falsey's plate. And then, yeah, okay. Can, can someone, uh, maybe you can, Eric, but can someone describe to me what it actually takes to get a general obligation bond on a, on the, on a uh, ballot, on the 2018 ballot? The legislature has Just 11 and 21, right? It's not the special it's just a simple majority. signature. Um, and then it passes 50 plus 1. Yeah, I don't know of any super majority for it. I mean, we have it. When's the last time we did one? I think it was uh, the one I did in 2001. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> no, actually, I think we had one. Was there one since then? I think we had one in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. They might have done another one. I thought they had so much money, they didn't need it, but that's right. Because I, I, I know we, because we put the uh, Muldoon overpass, 15 million, in the, and it passed. That's it. And that's how we got that thing started, which is almost finished. <laughs> well, to give you an idea how rare they are, it had been over 20 years before the one we did in 2001. And then if it wasn't again until 2010. Yeah. Two it, in 30 years or yeah. just because we just paid for everything cash because we've been so loaded for so long. Yeah. Um, but now we've got to start operating like a normal And they're, they're just difficult to put together mm -hmm. because you've got to have something for everybody in right. all the regions of the oh, state. Yeah. That's what I was going to, that's the real complication is right. who writes it and how and what mix and and whether it's their pet thing or it's a real deal that the area really wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do think starting with, well, I mean, we start with, with the port, really important, that makes sense. But I mean, if the discussion can be, do you guys, do you think we need a geo bond to do construction? And there's general agreement, yeah, if we don't, we're not going to have a lot of construction. What would you want on it, Fairbanks or Southeast or yeah. and uh, Valley and Kenai? And then the and then when it comes to us, we're well, we're mainly going to be the port. Um, maybe some other stuff, but I would think it would be all the port. And we're starting those conversations with the other communities to say, wouldn't this be a great idea? Shouldn't we all be on the same page? What do you guys want? And just to sort of slow roll that, so by yeah. the time it gets to 
I mean, it wouldn't be a Christmas tree, but that's what it's intended to be. Yeah, and the danger is you get too big and then it fails, but yeah, so that's the limiter is. Well, and then when, we de when you're dealing with the legislators, you know, you're, the horse trading begins, you know, and <laughs> and then so, you, like you said, you never know what exactly you're going to end up with. We're going to have to need the Anchorage delegation to basically speak with one voice as the port, it's the port, it's the port, and that can be challenging because there are people that... Something to keep in mind when you do it, it's a rare opportunity to do things without federal guidelines driving them because it's pure state money. Mm -hmm. Like there's some, if you've got a road project or something, you haven't been able to work its way through the Byzantine federal highway design, planning, everything. It's an opportunity to do, that's how we did uh, Elmore. We, we would have been another decade to do Elmore if we waited for it to go through the AMATS process. You're right, Pete. 2012 was the last one. 2012. Okay. Dave, are you, does this, ma'am, Mr. Chairman? Yep. Yes. Thank you. I. Does the school district have a separate set of requests, or are you under with us? Well, this is my first year there, but um, we do have a legislative priority list that we produced last year, and it's <coughs> going to be rather similar this year, but with a few things moved up more emphasis on the school cost differential study um, because we believe that component of the formula is is way out of date and costing us between eight and thirty million dollars a year and funding that should be coming to Anchorage schools instead of everywhere else right. because it hasn't been updated uh, and to explain that real briefly there was a analysis done by the Institute of Social and Economic Research in 2015 of teacher cost. Oh wait, we're talking about you. I've heard you give this. Yes, yeah, exactly. We're good. So I heard you give that, it to the FCC recently. And that was on the list <laughs> yeah. last year, but it's being pushed much forward to the front of the list this year. And secondly, we're looking for some hold harmless clauses in the formula, so we don't lose money when we do cost efficiencies. And right, like closing schools. Exactly. And last year we um, had a lunch with, in sort of collaboration with the school district and invited all the legislators to attend and then each did a presentation on what the legislative programs were. Do you guys hire lobbyists as well? We did last year um, and um, I think we're going to go out for an RFP this year. Just was it last year? Last year it was Wendy. Oh, that's right. Wendy yeah, and it was... And, 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 Dick had talked to me about this. He said, we offered you guys the use of Wendy. You know, said she could just represent you, and then the superintendent said we were going to do that, but there was some issue with that, and I don't know what the legal issue was. Is there is there an opportunity for shared services here? I mean, mm -hmm. is it? There, it? there wasn't an issue per se, so much as what we had offered was uh, that Wendy and her team would do a decreased price for the two, right? but not two for one yeah. um, and part of that had to do with the fact that uh, Eddie Jeans was on her team and he is an education specialist and Eddie is no longer in the state to my knowledge um, so I don't know what uh, they would be willing to do and I don't we don't have contracts for 2018 Eddie yet. would be a neat resource in that fight I'm sorry he's going yeah on. Eddie yeah there is another issue, though, we have to be careful because if we're asking for some of these formulaic things, they, we might run into conflict with some of their other clients because right. some of them have multiple school districts yes. from other regions of the state. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, maybe I'm misinterpreting what you're saying. The ASD certainly would be in conflict with some other school districts. But not with us. Not with we, us. Oh, not we with, not we, with approve, we approve your budget. You're going yeah. to use it to buy a lobbyist. We also buy a lobbyist. It seems but like Wendy may have other school districts. She does. Oh, I see. Multiple yes. other communities. She doesn't have school does. districts. Yeah. 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 And normally, gotcha. the municipalities aren't very much in conflict, but the school districts is much easier Could to get in conflict. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, that, that's an argument for you guys perhaps finding a different lobbyist. It's not necessarily an argument against you and us having the same lobbyist. Yeah, it would you be one of the lobbyist. factors in an RFP, you know. Yeah. Are you representing anybody else that might be in conflict with sure. our legislative agenda? We do not have contracts for 2018? No. Not yet. Well, we haven't signed anyone up, necessarily. 
Well, and, and, uh, and the the uh, smaller schools with with fewer students actually get more of a formula per student than than Anchorage does uh, because we've got you know more students in our schools. I mean, and so it actually works against us. And typically, you, you usually have economies of scale when you're larger, but it, it doesn't help us to to be the biggest in this situation. I don't think, I mean, ha having heard Dave explain it before, I don't think the issue is so much like us versus Kotzebue or versus the little rural schools that have always had sort of that kind of, it's us versus like the Matsu, the Valley. Kenai, right, yeah. where they become um, uh, cheaper. And we saw in the paper today that apparently their economy is doing better than ours too. So they should help, they should spread, help us <laughs> out a little bit. Maybe we should... Uh, <laughs> Although gasoline is up 30 cents a gallon here, uh, you know, since that first hurricane hit, so hmm. driving to and fro is a little bit more spendy. Yeah. But if you can buy a house $100,000 cheaper, yeah, that, that'll buy a lot of gas. You know. Dave? Did you guys already have a plan for getting together this year with the Anchorage Caucus at all? The city? No, we haven't set one yet. We had reached out to the Anchorage Caucus and we were shooting for around November, uh, December 5th, I think oh. it is. Um, Sorry. Sure, go ahead. I no, mean, no, no. I, it, 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 it's all been in you know, a big kerfuffle because of the special session. Right. right. The, something else I just realized we might want to add to this, which, uh, and you know, the mayor can think about whether or not it will politicize it to a greater degree, but um, when me and Chris Schutte and others have been looking for an alternative site for the bus barn, mm -hmm. state properties have been on that list of places we are considering. Mm -hmm. um, and there might come a point where we need legislators' help on, you know, who knows what it is, what kind of contingency. But for example, the state DOT, the transportation yard, allowing us to use part of it for our bus barn. Mm -hmm. I think that's something that we should be aware of when we're talking to the state. I, I think that's absolutely right. I don't think that we would include it in the legislative priorities, but yeah. that is definitely well, a list of things that we yeah. speak to. Do they have regular DOT MOA meetings, and we have regular meetings yeah. with the governor just to bring to his attention anything that may be an issue. Can you do a land swap without a bill in the legislature if we had to do one with the state? I think it depends on the terms. We did that. We transferred the armory on Tudor to the, or was it the DOT? I'm trying to remember. I don't know. I think it, it might be DOT. Is this going to travel with the capital budget this year? Well, so that was going to be my question is how, what do you want the timeline of this to be? In the past couple of years, it's passed anywhere between December and January. Um, this, uh, can be ready for the 21st if you want to do it with the budget, if we're still aiming for the 21st, as, um, or it can be the first meeting in December, depending on um, how many amendments, if any, the body has. I don't know if you want to do a work session on it so the whole body has review of it. That's probably a good idea. And we did have a code change that affected legislative programs, so I'll look back on that and see when it is due. Yes. I believe that it travels now with the capital budget. So we should, if we're going to do a work session, schedule that soon. And if committee members have amendments, we should make those known soon as well. So we're looking at, would you say, uh, the 21st of November? Right. That's the second meeting in November. Right. That's the sort of trajectory for the budget right now. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I think our, when we talked about this in April, we wanted to get the legislative program done early so we could do some work on it before our session and pe we could be more involved in it. But I think a combination of factors, the SB 91 extensive time suck, the the, uh, the special session itself have made it so we're, we've sort of busted past those, um, have busted past those deadlines anyway. So. I think, to me at least, it seems, seems like the 21st or just, I think, either late November or early December it doesn't really make a huge difference either way. But, um, yeah. And if we decided we had to get it done sometime between the 21st and the 1st of December, we could have uh, Mr. Traney call 
a, a quick special meeting and, and get it done. Yeah, I think, I mean, from our perspective, we can have um, our final draft ready by the 7th, I believe. And um, depending on how you want to pass the program, um, previously it's been an adoption resolution, and last year it was an actual um, AM that went through a public hearing moment. That will be sort of so introduced. The document itself, so right. there would be some legislative history of the document, as opposed to just the conversations back and forth between the administration and the legislature. Right. Um, so one of the, either of those options is fine. It just depends on when you want. You guys would be ready for introduction on the seventh. Yeah, I mean, we could th we could theoretically lay our version on the table on the seventh, and then the body can take it. And if there's any amendments or holding a work session on it for passage on the twenty first, that work. Yeah, I think, I, so. I think we might be able to make that happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We can, a work session anytime in between there as well. Okay. And we're totally open to to jointly doing a meeting with you guys yeah. if it works out in the time frame. That would be great. Like we say, we can Do you know who took Heidi's job? Heidi Anderson? No, it's um, Spawn Holston Birch's offices are the co chairs. Oh, the, for the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the Anchorage Caucus. So. Right. I mean, the um, no. ASD rep who sort of does communications. Heidi oh. Emily was your communication. Yeah, yeah Kathleen, uh, I can't think of her last name. I'm learning, there's a big bureaucracy. <laughs> yeah. I'm learning a lot of new names. <laughs> um, okay, I'll get in touch. She was the person who helped us coordinate last time, and so okay. I'll check in with them to see if, if yeah. there's uh, a lunch. We did a, we did a lunch at the King Career Center where the kids made lunch, yeah. and everybody came in. That's always really well received. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's no reason we yeah. can't move Digital ahead with our time. Because it doesn't look like you're going to have your agenda together by the 5th of December, probably. Yeah. Oh, we could. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's passed on the 21st, then we'll be definitely be ready to go by the 5th. Yeah. We were going to try to do a meeting at the LIO so it's more convenient for them and just try to do something different because it's hard to get turnout in these right. things. Right. But we're totally open to doing something in career with you guys too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see if I can get in touch with um, whoever took Heidi's job and then see if they have any ideas. That'll work. I'm chairman of the communications committee, so that's kind of my job too. So from the board. Oh, great. Working. Well, you're doing communicating today, so good yes. job. <laughs> Just looking at our requests here on page four, um, Department of Revenue Information Sharing RE marijuana tax. Uh -huh. So we're, do we think we're actually getting our fair share from the state of Alaska? As far as the money goes, yes. It's um, just the databases that they have access to that we do not, that we think should, because we have um, marijuana regulations as well it would mm -hmm. be helpful if that information were shared across. What kind of information? I don't know. I'd have to ask Bill. What kind of money are we getting that you just referred to? Our fair share of the taxation. We don't get any. Oh, okay. They <laughs> levy them. <laughs> then the businesses pay us. I thought we got 50% of the license fees. We an do. Initial license fees. Okay. And that's reported through. So that's all square. Dave? Can I just make a comment on the community dividend program? If you go back and look at the history of revenue sharing, the oil and gas property tax was supposed to be a fund source for municipal revenue sharing. And, yet, and this is like 40 years ago. If you go back and dig out those minutes, if, if I was going to go to the legislature and argue for a program like this, I would point out that the oil and gas property tax is still there, but Revenue sharing and municipal assistance. <laughs> they just took the money. Yeah, yeah, they just took the money, and slowly, of course, the the main, you know, Valdez, Oslo, Borough, Fairbanks sucked up a lot more of it than was anticipated to. But it's 
That's how historical it is, though. It's really something that's unprecedented that it's all just gone away. Well, they were able to get that funding because they were legally challenged challenging, you know, how much they were getting paid for their for their property tax, you know, by the producers. And so over a period of years, sometimes the producers actually lost here and there. And so the municipalities actually gained a little bit. So any anything else uh, why we're here, anybody else got any other ideas uh, about legislation they'd like to see that we don't currently have on our request? So, so I just want to sort of one clarifying question slash comment, and because I missed the first session, I missed uh, the beginning of this. So it seemed like last year our kind of theme, if you will, aside from please fix our port, was sort of give us a lo give us some more tools at the local level to do economic development. Yes. Right. And this time our theme is help us deal with the opioid crisis. I mean, help us deal with public safety more broadly, but we, we know kind of what its sources are. Help us with our court, help us with it, yes. Right, okay. Yeah. And I, I totally support that. I think, it's a, I think it's a smart direction to go this year, um, as the last one was, was as well. And hopefully next year we'll be able to go back to give us some more flexibility in the things we want to do. But as far as it being a priority, Public safety issues are. Is, is there anything that we need to ask them to do legislatively to resolve some of the snow removal issues that we're having on the state roads? Yeah, they need to fund their budget. That's that's where it comes from. The the control over you know certain state assets versus certain municipal assets. The the the, the snow dump being a good example. Of, mm -hmm. You know. Is there something legislatively we could do to ask them to solve that? The airport snow dump? Well, yeah, the airport snow dump is like a prominent example. I'm sure that O&M could find others. Um, but, you know, the, the I've heard kind of multiple answers about that. Oh, it's required by FAA regula regulations. Mm -hmm. And I say, no, it's actually not. It's the, state it's, it's the state making an administrative decision. If that's true, then you could pass a bill that said, you know, Municipalities shall be allowed to use city snow dumps or something like that. It's, it's both of those things. I mean, yeah. based on what we have seen from other airports and other locations, the FAA has the ability to say, no, you must charge fair market value. Yeah. They also have language in there that says, unless determined to be to the benefit of the community. Mm -hmm. um, so that puts it squarely on the airport's shoulders to say, we think that this benefits the community, so we think that this passes muster and we are going to support this. That's where the difficulty has been thus far. Yeah. We think we have it resolved. Okay. I mean, if then if that is the case and it's at the discretion of the state <coughs> airports and you could pass a law that says it, it is hereby determined that it is in the best interest of every community in Alaska that snow storage is good for the community. Yeah. Is that an issue anywhere but here? Probably not, because people only do things to Anchorage. They're not comfortable doing it to any other community. Maybe well, I think Juno maybe. maybe. Well, Juno owns their airport. Oh, See, they everybody do. owns their own airports Except but Anchorage yeah. and Fairbanks. Yeah. So it would only be Anchorage and Fairbanks, but it would probably appeal to Fairbanks. Maybe. Yeah. Could. Um, Sort of there was another part of that. What was the other part of that aside from snow dumps? Oh, the roads. The roads. So the relationship between m and and DOT on snow maintenance is generally very positive and they work very well together. It is almost entirely a mechanism of them cutting their budgets back yeah. and not getting rid of their equipment and getting rid of the people who do the job. So it becomes an impossibility to have people do the work to clear the roads when you don't have the money. And all they're saying right now is, we um, will guarantee service on the Glen and the Seward, and everything else is up in the air. What would we do at the state level? I'm sorry, it flipped away. For, the, for Fairbanks and Anchorage, what would we tell the airports to do? We would just legislatively determine if they right now they have a discretion <coughs> to determine whether or not something is in the community's best interest. 
we could just write a law that this says is, this is in the community's best interest. You, you do a policy, a bill that sets a state policy, go, sometimes they go in the uncodified version of the section of the statutes. We've got several in there. So there's like one about um, preference when the state's mar as a market participant, it would prefer its own residents. You know, We've got one on the Jones Act. It says the policy of the state of Alaska is the governor's office shall lobby for repeal of the Jones Act. So you just have a statement of policy saying that it's the policy of the state of Alaska that it should share, snow, you know, snow dump availability with the local governments. It's in the best interest of Alaska. Bam! Let's ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we might as well ask. <laughs> so you're working on an amendment that'll claim that, and uh, Mr. Dunbar? Well, I, you know, I, I'll talk to uh, I'll talk to. Al or whomever else before I do that because uh, you know if it some more gets a, get in the way of it but I don't know it seems like Jason Grant and uh, and Matt Clayman could write that bill and put it forward it would be pretty seems like a no brainer you could approach it from a pedestrian safety point of view too because there were a lot of pedestrian injuries last year because of the burns oh yeah well that's because the state has stopped hauling their damn snow yeah you know, it's funny though, when at these community council, well, I, this is what I've told is they like plow into the street and they plow back onto the sidewalk and they go back and forth. But I've been in community council meetings where state house reps, particular state house rep, has said, no, the state did not cut back its snow removal budget. Um, and no, these this machinery was this was accessed a long time ago. And um, I then I talked to Mike Abbott and he's like, no, actually, that's not true. But... Um, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to force the legislature to actually debate this. Well, there's, there's a fight every year about the regional transportation budgets. I mean, that's where that funding shows up. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason the Anchorage Caucus couldn't, you know, adopt a position that for pedestrian safety there has to be something addressed. That, you know. It probably does fit into your public safety overall. Oh, it absolutely does. Would it be an unreasonable request to clear the streets and sidewalks? No, we had a fatality. Uh, I mean, we have tons of pedestrian fatalities, but we had that one that was pretty prominent on Elmore, I think, where the woman was walking because this, the sidewalk was covered in snow, and so she was was in the night near Native Hospital, and she was in the road, and she got whacked. Um, and we had people emailing the assembly. I, I don't know if you guys got those ones that were the X-rays from the doctor. So, so I mean, I, you know, they were anonymized, but they were like, "Hey, I'm getting way more fractures." This this winter because there are so many more car crashes from a doctor's office mm -hmm. wow. from an emergency room. Wow. Huh. Well, I, I thought I heard on the radio that we just had our twenty uh, second uh, pedestrian uh, struck in Anchorage this calendar year. Yeah, I don't remember whether that was killed or whether it was just struck. We had two killed this weekend. Twenty twenty two is both in East Anchorage. That's, that's a couple. That's a couple of months. That's, that's a big big number. Yeah. Um. Um, I was looking here uh, at, at uh, some of our last year's request. Um, the electronic publication of real estate foreclosure list, you would think that would sort of be a no-brainer. Have we had yes, trouble with that one? It, it would be a no-brainer, but <laughs> yes. Uh, the last time it was attempted, I don't know when it was attempted last, was mm, sometime in the last 10 years. And this comes from... Um, originally came through Tammy Oswald before she retired, um, but the uh, newspapers come out and lobby against it actively and oh, okay. kill it. Um, so <laughs> it... This is not the one that's killed by the realtors every time. No. That's a, that's a different one. That's, that's the mandatory reporting. This is right. a newspaper. <clears throat> um, so it's one of those things that I think can sometimes get through if people don't know that it's moving, but then once certain entities discover it, it stalls out real fast. Yeah, what is that phrase, like, don't get in a fight with somebody who buys ink by the barrel? Right. <laughs> right. Um, but I think, I, think that's how the last, I think that's how the last version was actually torpedoed, is that the, they did, the Empire did an editorial on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still think it's smart to ask. But it is something that the real estate department and other departments who are, have to do public notices like that with the ever-changing dynamic of technology feel like um, is a requirement that costs more money than... How much does it cost? 
I can ask. I can find out. That might be wrong. helpful to put in. Yeah. And I think we had it in the original version two years ago. Um, but because it's a relatively small amount of money to someone, to, a, to an entity like the legislature, it becomes less compelling with the number. But when you're dealing with the real estate department's budget, it's something that if is an unnecessary expense, then they don't want to have to pay for it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, with looking at how thin the newspaper is, especially the classified ag section, and this requires them to list this for four consecutive weeks. Right. I can see why the publications don't want this to pass. I, yeah. They're they're out there scrambling for anything, and so this this would be just one more thing that they would cut down on their cash flow. It's just rent seeking. Hmm. It's just rent seeking. So they just do all transfer. Well, I'm good. All right. Um, any other comments or questions about priorities for 2018 from the committee? How about comments from the administration? We have none, Mr. Chairman. Uh, audience comments? <laughs> no. <laughs> no comment from the audience. All right, well, I guess we can adjourn.